up, YouTube? This is Farooq. I'm at Game Warp 2013 in Orlando, Florida, and you're about to get vlogged. It's the video vlog. Hello YouTube, this is Frugal, and here we are with another video blog. Been quite a while since I've done these, so I apologize for the um, gap between this one and the previous one. Things have been a little bit frantic, partly due to you guys. We're coming up on 9,000 subscribers on YouTube. Nearly 2,000 subscribers, so 1,800, 1,900 subscribers on Facebook. It's a little bit bonkers. 600 of you following me on Twitter, which I haven't even promoted. So uh, that's pretty crazy. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks for the requests. Everything I do, I do it for you people. I can't call you you people. I'm sorry. Now, I do have a habit I have noticed on these blogs of kind of restlessly you know, moving around, so I have to keep my hands up here because somebody pointed out that on a previous vlog it looked a little bit dubious when my hands went down here and I was just kind of fiddling with, fiddling is the wrong word, um, just messing with my fingers. So, hands where we can see them, hands where we can see them. All right, so I wanna to talk today about a subject near and dear to all your hearts if you are using Prepared or you're using FSX, in particular FSX, and that is performance. Now, a number of you have said in the past that the performance on my PC seems to be pretty good. It is, it has to be, because when you start recording video with Fraps, Fraps kills your frame rate. The performance of my FSX install has to be pretty good. Now, the way I did that in the past, two things. I would go to Costas's tweaking guide, which is what I typically tell anybody that asks me for help. Go and Google Costas FSX tweaking guide. That's Costas with a K. He's got a great document out there, very lengthy document explaining how to tweak FSX, what all the config settings are that you can mess with, what they do. It's a fabulous guide. Not denigrating that at all. It's still the number one place I would recommend you all go to. Number two, I used a tool from, I think it's an Estonian group of developers called FSPS Extreme or FSPX, FSPS FSX Extreme or Extreme FSX. I'm just gonna call it FSPS. Um, I liked it, it gave me a graphical interface and I could tweak the various things that Costas' guide tells you to go tweak and lets me store different configs. So I would typically fire that thing up, choose config number one if I'm doing IFR, and then I would go and do an IFR video and everything was lovely. The thing that bugged me with that is that it, if I ever ran FSX without that tool running, then nothing would work. All the graphics would be corrupted. It wasn't very pretty. My frame rates would be awful. So I always felt a little bit like I was being held hostage by this tool. And that is a problem with all of these boosters. All these graphical FSX boosters that they advertise that you can go and buy. A recent one just came out is FSX, I think it's just called FSX Booster, which I actually got also from FSPS. Um, they always feel a little bit like you're being held hostage, that you have to use this tool. If you stop using this tool, you're screwed, you know, and you don't really know what it's doing behind the scenes. Now, many of you know, of course, I'm on the 777 beta, so I'm a beta tester for PMDG. Part of being on that beta test team means that I have access to a lot of very, very knowledgeable people about FSX, both at PMDG and in the rest of the test team. There's about 10 or 15 of us. Um, so I've been listening to the conversations going on and asking a few questions myself. And I got a niggling feeling that I would like to try something in FSX. So the first thing I want to talk about, if you have one of these boosters, seriously, I have discovered this week they're a complete waste of money. I don't know why I relied on it so long. It doesn't do good things because I uninstalled it and I started to, rather than reinstall FSX, I wanted to figure out exactly what this tool had done to my install that screwed it up. And I found it reorders your scenery library, which is always a bad thing. All that scenery you have from Orbex, from UTX, from GEX, and all the different add-on airports and traffic and stuff, they have to be in a specific order to work well both from a performance point of view and from a graphics point of view. This FSPS Extreme crap reordered everything. So that's part of why all my stuff was screwed up. I don't know whether it reorders it so you have to run FSX with that tool running and then it kind of puts it back when it's running or if it just naturally just screws it up but it had reordered everything. Didn't like that at all. So I spent a ha happy two or three hours going through all my add-on scenery, going through all the PDFs, finding out the order that things needed to be in. And I might do a video on that explaining how to reorder your scenery library. Now the second thing, I didn't like some of the tweaks that this FSPS thing had done to my FSX config file, which if you're on Windows 7 is in app data, I think it's your, your user directory, app data roaming, 
Microsoft FSX. There's a file in there called fsx.cfg. That's where you normally tweak stuff. I didn't like some of the stuff it had done to that. So what I did was I blew it away. I deleted it, fired up FSX. It creates a brand new one, set all the settings I want within FSX, quit out, and then I can start tweaking. Now, here's the thing. I had seen on the conversations within the beta test team, somebody talking about the only tweak I ever do is this. So I thought, that's really interesting because I've never just done that one thing. So I looked at that. Ryan from PNDG also linked an article he wrote. Now this is only useful if you're an NVIDIA user. If you're not an NVIDIA user, you're gonna get limited mileage out of this, all right? I gotta warn you first. But he linked an article he wrote on the Avsim forums, which is linked, by the way, in the comment, in the um, description of this video. Check it out. On how to use NVIDIA Inspector. Now, what NVIDIA Inspector does is it basically uh, uses the features of the graphics card to tweak the output, you know, to tweak the image, to give you a better image than you would normally get out of FSX, but also to take some of the load off FSX. Now, those of you on Facebook know I had a lot of problems initially with the 777's videos and screenshots. What I was getting with was the video and the screenshots that were coming out of Fraps were not what I was seeing on the screen. They had jagged edges. They did not look good. So that bugged me a little bit, which is another reason why I went hunting for Ryan's document and Ryan's advice. Anyway, what I ended up doing was three things in FSX config. I turned on the high mem fix. I will link Costas's tweaking guide. You can find all this stuff in Costas's tweaking guide. I'm gonna link that in the show notes. I turned on the high mem fix. I turned on the widescreen fix. And I turned buffer pools off. Three things that I normally always do, but then I do a bunch of other stuff as well. I did those three things. Widescreen, high mem, buffer pools. Did all three of those. I then followed Ryan's guide, installed NVIDIA Inspector, set up the settings that he recommends amazing thing happened. I was having some issues. The 777 performance is much better than the NGX. It really is much better than the NGX. But my experience with it was it was only marginal. All the other testers were saying, oh my God, I'm getting 10 or 20 more frames per second. Whereas I was only getting, say, five. So it was an improvement, but not as amazing as their improvement. I did all these tweaks from Ryan. I did those three tweaks in my FSX config and I jumped. Now, get this, on the ground at Gatwick, using Gatwick 2000 or Gatwick Extreme, whatever it is, UK 2000 scenery, Gatwick Extreme. I jumped from 25 frames per second to 40, four zero frames per second, which is amazing, 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 amazing. And my sim now looks better than it has ever, ever looked. So I strongly urge you, if you're having problems with performance, with FSX, I know a lot of you are, blow away the FSX config, start FSX up, it makes a new config, do all your graphic settings and stuff in FSX, quit out, put those three tweaks in, widescreen, high mem, buffer pools, which you can find in Costas' guide. Then if you're an NVIDIA user, look at Ryan's document, also linked in the show notes, try those things out and just see how far you get. I found it to be amazing, amazing. Anyway, as always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. If you have not checked it out, I do strongly urge you to check out facebook.com slash frugalsim. There is video and pictures that go up there that you don't see on this YouTube channel. So just letting you know, the first 777 stuff appeared on Facebook, not on YouTube. As always, my name is, is Frugal. Thank you for watching.